All right, Homesteader family, welcome to this edition of the Sunday Monday Vlog. Welcome back to the journey. Thank you for being part of the journey, and don't forget to share the journey. And look at that lazy butt, Rex. Just laying in bed. I figure I'll show you, Rex, real quick before I sit down and get into everything that's going on around here. Now, I've done lost my voice because Minnie Mouse is in heat. Uh, she swelled up the other day, and Max and Mickey have been going at it because Max wants to do some loving, and Max is her baby, and of course that's not going to happen on my watch. And they got into it the one time real good. Mickey Mouse got Max's nose down and got his ear, uh, so he's all patched up from that. And then they were in the camper here, and got into it before I could get to him and Max got Mickey in the eye uh it looked like his tooth went inside the eyelid uh because Mickey's inside his eye is a little puffed up the eye itself isn't damaged and it just looks like he irritated uh, the skin or whatever because it swelled up some um so I think Mickey should be fine so right now they're all outside uh in the pens Mickey is in with Minnie Mouse. Uh, they have tied, I want to say, three times now in the last couple days. So Minnie Mouse should be pregnant by now. And then in roughly two months or so, I should be having puppies. So end of May to end of June, end of July. So sometime end of July, first part of August, I should be having puppies. Or I shouldn't, Minnie should. Uh, so we're have puppies coming. And then, of course, somewhere between July and October, Cleopatra is due if she is pregnant. Uh, the camel, for those of you who don't know Cleo, who Cleopatra is. Uh, hopefully, Mama Spots, the spotted mini donkey, she should be due. I thought she was going to be due last year. She still hasn't popped, so we'll find out. And then the other gray donkey is also due. Uh, I've been hatching a bunch of baby chicks which you're gonna see there's an incubator there big cabinet incubator that I spent a good chunk of money on uh, So I've got a little bit of chicken eggs and duck eggs left And then I'm going to change all the settings for the emu eggs and hope that I can get some emus to hatch uh, I might have ruined all the emu eggs because they need a lower heat and lower humidity and everything's higher right now for the chickens and stuff so I'm gonna try my hand at it if not uh, if emu eggs don't start hatching in the next month and a half because they take up to 55 days to hatch, then I'll go ahead, discard the emu eggs, and then restock it with chicken eggs. Tomorrow, I have the 18 baby chicks that were just born in the last two days. They're sold. I have two feather chicks uh, that are sold. Uh, so, worst case, I'll just start hatching a bunch of uh, baby chicks and ducks and geese and stuff like that and go from there the cool part now for those of you that don't know what a pied peacock is go to google and say google pied peacocks and look at images they are beautiful beautiful birds so i have indian blues and i have white male peacocks so the white males have finally uh, went up with other uh, Indian blue peacocks. Uh, the Indian blues have been traveling all over the ranch. The whites were staying right here at the shipping containers at the entrance of the petting zoo. And the Indian blues were staying on the far side. Now they're all running all over the place. So if the whites will breed with the female Indian blues, which they should be fertile now because they should be two years old now, uh, which would make the males fertile, then it will be a cross, which makes a pied peacock. And they are spectacular looking. You can get some really, really awesome uh, white and color uh, pattern mixes. And like I said, if you Google, you can see the different types. Uh, so I'm hoping that happens. And then everybody said peacocks are loud. And my peacocks had never made noise. Well, I guess what it was was I needed some girls here. Because now the guys holler. It sounds like a cat and a lady screaming and dying at the same time. Uh, so I was in the camper the one night watching TV. 
and the dogs went nuts. I heard it. I, I thought something was getting killed. I go run out with spotlights, and it's the white peacocks running out the mountainside to the other peacocks uh, when they first uh, got together. So now they they do that yell every once in a while, uh, back and forth, and it's loud. Uh, the guineas are loud. Uh, the roosters are loud, but I love the animals. I love listening to the noise, so it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, as you can see, I've been filming this whole time. You don't hear any of the animals. So, you know, they're nice and quiet at night. They just make their ruckus during the day. Uh, the different animals are becoming more people friendly as we have more and more visitors coming every day. Uh, Stubbs the Zorse is going out and greeting people now. Of course, Girl. It, all the kids love Girl. Uh, any kids that come, Girl likes to follow them down the road and uh, loves attention. So, a lot of visitors are just over static and they're like, Oh, I'm getting my sister or my brother or my cousin or my uncle or my niece and I'm bringing them back and I'll be back and... I know everybody's coming back and the reason I can be a little bit cocky about knowing everybody's coming back is because there is no competition for what I am doing. I am doing something nobody else has done and that's why trying to get insured was beyond difficult. Uh, but I have a good company that decided to take a risk on me and so far everything's been going good and then of course last year I wasn't insured. I had over 400 people here last year. Not as business, just people stopping by to see the animals. So, you know, I've probably been through five, 600 people now and uh, no incidences and everybody just loves it. So, uh, it's awesome. So, I, I worked on uh, beautifying. I started the 160-foot hooger culture flower garden bed. So, you'll see that. Uh, got signs up everywhere. Uh, got Rex's cage set up with shade cloth so he's out there during the day without a diaper on. So, he doesn't have to have a diaper on all the time. That makes it nice for him because he gets some ease of not having to wear the diaper. And saves me a little bit of money by not going through as many diapers per day. And doing that. Uh, just hit my 400 hours on my tractor, so the tractor's going to the shop in the morning. That's got to go through the uh, service requirements, so I'll be without my tractor for a week. So I'll be cutting down on basically doing anything because the tractor's what allows me to do physical work here at the ranch. Ugh, and I'm exhausted because I've been running dirt in the tractor all day. Uh... But everything's going good. Uh, selling chicks tomorrow. Selling eggs tomorrow. And then all week I'll be here running things again. And just doing what I can with what I got with what I'm able to do. And hopefully my voice will come back. So I hope everybody enjoys the rest of the video. Uh, when I get an opportunity I'll get some footage of the animals. I've had several people request I do a, just a strict animal video. Even though I'm not to 5,000 subscribers yet, since I said I'll, I'll start two videos a week if I hit 5,000 subscribers. Uh, but I'll throw one out for you. And he wants his hay. So he's trying to get in the bag to get his hay. Because that purple bag has his hay in it. So I'm going to get Rex fed. Then I'm going to get the dogs in. Come back in. It's already 10.30. It's going to take me probably three hours to get this video uploaded with my internet. Uh, but I'll try to have it out sometime in the morning uh, before I head to town. Hope everybody had a great week. Uh, hopefully the weather's getting better uh, this weekend. It was down to 24 degrees. All the hoses and everything kept freezing for my water. And uh, it's just been a mess. But slowly but surely the weather should be turning better. And we'll go from there. So, take it easy. Alright, so you can see I am unwrapping Juicy Fruit Gum. I still have all those packs sitting there. Uh, getting another batch outside. And I will say, 
I have been finding dead mice laying all over the place. So this juicy fruit gum is doing the trick because I don't use poison and I wasn't finding dead mice prior to putting juicy fruit out. So I'm doing another tray out so that way I can wipe out the next wave. And then just had all these baby chicks born. So they all are sold and go to their new home tomorrow. And I have more eggs in here, which in the next four days, if they don't hatch, then that means they're no good. The emu eggs are still in there, which I found out I messed up with the emu eggs. They actually fit on all the shelves. I was putting the eggs inside, laying on top here. But what you do is you squeeze these flaps like that, and you put the egg, and then another one flaps up against it. So got that figured out and then I also built underneath the stairs here that I installed on the trailer I made a uh, shelter so that way underneath the stairs the electric can't get wet with the heat lamp and these are all the feather chicks so I have two of these chicks going out uh, tomorrow they're sold as well and that just gives me more space. Uh, we got one goose. And uh, all the ducks are sold. And this is just what we've been doing. So I'm going to, uh, since it's starting to get windy, I'm going to come back and film. Show you everything else I've done. And then I'll do the voiceover on all that. And you can see the storm's moving. And... All right, I went to the sign shop today in Canyon City Master Printers, and you can see I just got my open sign. So, open 11 to 7, close Monday and Thursday. I got the two top corners. You can see it's tied to the boards, and then the bottom left corner is also tied, so that way it can't swing back and forth. It's held by the three corners. And with the wind and everything, I'm hoping the three corners will be strong enough to hold the sign. And this is the entrance of the petting zoo, the entrance of the driveway. And then I'll finish doing the fencing up over the hill as soon as I get a chance. But this is the start and everything is starting to come together and is starting to look better and better every day. Okay, so this is all footage from weeks ago. So these are the four sinks. Got the cap on. Of course, I didn't do voiceover. I drilled holes. I ran the pipe in. So this water line for the sinks is going to come down here. It's going to come down and come over. I have a, a couple rocks holding it down right now. I'm going to use all these rocks all over the place. Do a big rock circle. And the water is going to drain. You can see the uh, boards. Or not the boards. The uh, tree trunks i can't think right now uh the logs the tree logs and the water is going to go all the way down the hoogar culture bed okay so um just slightly bury the pipe i got the big pile of rocks here then i'm going to cover everything like i said the water will drop down in between those logs it will go down the hoogar culture bed and everything will work together so I'm going to grab the tractor. I'm going to start grabbing this dirt and dumping the dirt all over because, like I said, I'm not doing it by hand. And we'll go from there. All right, so Stoner's Rock Block just got done delivering all the dirt. So here's the dirt. Uh, I got 15 tons, which is an entire dump truck load. Uh, you saw that pipe that I just showed you. That's not quite there yet. Uh, that will be put in because you've already seen it and I'm going to go ahead and start spreading all this dirt you can see uh, I did the dug it four foot deep filled four feet with uh, tree logs or yeah with logs of trees and then I cover it with the um, droppings inside the shipping container the straw the poop and everything all winter long and then I ran out of it because I don't have any more so from here on is where I'll stop I'll have to try to clean out some more in a couple weeks get all this filled in with that and then end up having to order another uh, truckload of dirt so I can go ahead and finish but you can see I mean 
these logs go down and down and down and down. Of course, I got grab that green plastic that's down in there. Uh, but this is all going to be a 160 foot long uh, flower hooger culture bed. And this will bring the bees in. So eventually I'll have beehives and the bees will also pollinate my uh, trees and farm. All right, so I just got home and Asplunda has dropped another couple loads of mulch there in the corner. So that will give me the mulch to start working on the flower bed and the flower garden. There goes the prairie dog running across. Uh, I got a bunch of signs, which I think I might have filmed twice. So you might see the signs twice. Uh, it is what it is. So I got the no smoking, no vaping sign there. The other sign above it that you've seen before. The stay on the road or you'd be asked to leave so people aren't going off the road and I can't find them if something happens. Uh, the please wash your hands before and after your visit. Got that all done. Of course, this is a building you guys have not seen. Uh, this was weeks ago and now I'm finally making the video because you guys haven't seen Sunday Monday vlogs in forever. Uh, just a couple live streams. So this is what I got done. And now you can see everything. Uh, the pipe's all buried. Uh, that's the pile of rocks there. Then I'll go ahead. I'll start laying out flowers that I just picked up. And I'll be showing you that. You can see I have running water now for the sinks. I bought these plastic sinks from Home Depot online. They were real cheap, 34 bucks a piece. I put a hose down, drilled a hole into uh, PVC pipe. Then I ran all the plumbing. I took some plastic uh, wood or plastic decking, cut it down to size, ran uh, screws down each side with small pieces that I cut off to hold it in place against the thin plastic. Uh, the sink faucet solid's not going nowhere. And of course, the sink's not going anywhere. It has the uh, four screws in the back of it that hold it onto the wall. And the water goes down no problem. We're in business. So I got two paper towel things, two soap things, the four sinks. So it's plenty for what I'm going to have. So these are all the different plant. These are all lilac bushes in the back. And then just a variety of different uh, flowers and different plants. They're all perennial. I'm not buying annuals. And then up there, you can see I got all the hurricane ties. I did it on the outside and on the inside. And then this is the on-demand hot water shower of the Mari. I'm going to put plastic decking there. That's what this is right here. And then this will be my shower area that you will see shortly. And hopefully, I'll have a shower coming up. May not be the best, but uh, it is what it is. At least it's a shower I can deal with. Uh, there's a bunch of edging I got. And then this is the volleyball uh, court area I'm digging out. I have a lot of work to do. Like I said, I'm going to start laying these flowers out. And then bring the mulch in, get the edging in. It's going to start looking good by the Sunday Monday vlog. Okay, so for those of you that might not have seen, these are the kennels that I made for the dog. I got the uh, black shade cloth cover and uh, strapped down all the way across. I also put this chain across all the doors just in case they pop a door loose somehow. I also put chain link across the top below the shade cloth. So when we get snows, the shade cloth won't buckle in with the weight of the snow with the chain link. And the dogs can't climb out the top. And like I said, each door is latched with the chain. So there's no way for the dogs to get out. So, and with the ground being rocky, they can't dig. Uh, I do have to, <coughs> excuse me. I do have to put a little bit of dirt behind a couple of the shelters that were lifted off the ground a little bit. But everything's good. So just got a package in from UPS when I got home. Uh, this is the next shade cloth. So this shade cloth is going to be going uh, over top the kennel down here to, on the left-hand side where Rex is during the day. And I also had uh, FedEx show up this morning, and they brought all of my safari umbrellas. So I have six of them. I only have five out because I only have five tables down here. So I have an extra one just in case something happens inside the camper. Or I might bring another picnic table down from on top of the mountain. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. But it's a safari 
palm tree themed umbrella. And what I like about it, a lot of people don't like it because of how it looks, which I agree. I'm not a fan of how it looks, but if I got solid green or solid brown or solid red or solid tan with as dusty and dirty as it is out here, the umbrellas would look like crap. With the different colors, you can't really tell, so that's why I got them. And then here with the kennel, I put the one uh, panel sideways. Uh, the Over here to the left-hand side is where I'm going to put baby chicks when they're feathered out and they don't need the heat lamp. And then the other side is for Rex's area, which is three of them until he's big enough. So I'm going to get the shade cloth uh, open. I'm going to get this across. I put the panel over top so when uh, the chickens are in here, I don't have to worry about hawks and all that stuff getting the baby chicks. And of course, there's this hole here, but with the shade cloth over top, they're not going to be able to get in. So I've got this work to do. I've got to get the flowers going. I've got to do digging for the volleyball court. It's just going to be a long, long week of work or a couple weeks of work. Uh, and, and that's pretty much it. The weather, we're still getting cold. Uh, we've been getting down in the 20s every once in a while. Some days we're getting up to 50s and 60s, but nothing super warm yet, which is a bummer because now I'm ready, as you can see. I've uh, leveled this dirt out now, so it's all ready to get things going. And then I'll have to start bringing in mulch, mulch everything, put the edging in, and uh, it's going to look good. So I'm going to get to work. Enjoy your day. I'll talk to you guys in a bit. All right, you can see all the mouses are out here laying down. Uh, Max is chewing on a bone. I just started working and I figured I'd get a little bit of footage uh, beforehand so you can see. I laid out the measuring tape so that way I can uh, figure out how the plants are going to be. And what a lot of people don't understand, I used to own a landscaping company. So the reason they are spaced so far apart is because at maturity in two to three years, they should fill in basically all of the space uh every other bush in the back is a lilac bush so they're gonna get four to five foot wide uh so that's why they have so much space on both sides the small plants in front of the lilacs the three flowers they only get a foot wide so the lilac can come that uh three feet to them and three feet back and it should all fill in, like I said, in two to three years. And this will be a nice big flower bush hedge type thing. And really bring the bees in. And any smell that blows from the animal side will be neutralized. All right, so I am back. Of course, I'm going to show you these signs. This is the sign I got on Rex's pen. Uh, that's the shade cover I was telling you I was going to put in. So it is a nice, thick, heavy-duty shade cloth uh, that will keep the sun off Rex. Of course, you can see he's got some spots where the sun comes in and other spots where it's shaded. I also went ahead, put in a couple of the aluminum benches. You can see there, they're painter benches, so people can sit on them while they uh, hang out with Rex. And then I just put that igloo in there uh, to cover his food in case of rain or if he wants to go in there. And then, of course, all the umbrellas like you saw. And I've done a lot of work. You can see that pile of dirt. That's my third pile of dirt now, digging out the volleyball court. This has been a task, and I still have a lot more to go. I'm not even halfway done with what I want to do uh, with the leveling and all that. But it's coming along. Like I say, if it wasn't for that tractor, I'd be screwed. And then, of course, here's the uh, hooker culture bed. I stopped here because, like I said, I didn't have any more straw and stuff. I'll have to get more out of the shipping container uh, if it's broke down yet. Yeah, if it's not, I'll just have to end it uh here for now and like i said every other is lilac bushes i have to pick up another one of those white ones to put in between these and then the red bushes down below that i want in between each of these uh groups of flowers uh home depot only had four so hopefully i can find more of them and i'll put the red bushes in if not 
then I'll have to wait and buy the red bushes next year and uh, put some more in. But uh, I totally forgot how much I love uh, landscaping. And of course, I used to own a landscaping company. And I'm thinking I might do more flower gardens and different uh, things with landscaping. And then the sand's going to come over to the edging. So the edging's not perfect, which is fine. Uh, I got the plastic decking in here on the floor. So you can see that looks really good. I only screwed it down on the side so that way it's nice and smooth on your feet in the center. I took my first shower uh, Saturday. It's been windy and bitter cold. It was a horrible, horrible shower. Now the heater wasn't even turned all the way hot and it was hot. This is the valve to go into the heater. I had this hose for the sinks and then I hook a hose up for the shower. I got that glass case installed. Uh, but like I, what I was saying with the uh, hot water heater, it wasn't even set all the way hot and it was like boiling. So even with the cold wind and everything, the water was hot, but you need to hit the water on your entire body because you turn around that cold air hits your back or your front and it was horrible. But at least I finally got my first shower here on the ranch. So I'm happy about that. And then of course, like I said, all my sinks are running. Everything uh, is zip tied down and just trying to make it look as nice as possible. And then I do want to get a uh, stucco and stucco the cinder blocks so it looks a lot nicer than just looking at the lines of the cinder block. And then, of course, like I showed you, I believe earlier, the uh, different signs there uh, here on the gate come in, the no smoking, no vaping. I had the open sign up front, and that's pretty much it. I mean, it's just been a lot of work and uh, just trying to get stuff done, make things look good. And then I know my one subscriber did not want me to say nothing. But one of my subscribers got me these nice solar lights. So I went ahead and put two solar lights on this corner and uh, two solar lights over here on this corner. So that way when I come down at night to go bathroom or whatever, this whole area lights up. And when I come through the gate when the truck's on the other side, this whole side lights up and when I'm washing my hands. So it's been really nice having them and thank you again.